we're live. Perfect. Hi and welcome to this Saturday Saturday uh, webinar with J Jim Charles. Uh, this is the Hugolo communi uh, community, and we are welcoming you. And in the room today, we have. Let me. Carrie, we have Carrie, we have Christine, we have Jim Charles, of course, we have Dave, we have Dawn, we have Marlene, we have uh, Sher is here, uh, Salesh is here, and Stephanie just joined us. We have Steve Robert in the room, and me, myself, Johannes is here too to help uh, out with the um, webinar today. So I will be reading your questions off the YouTube channel. So you can type, if you're uh, watching us from YouTube, you can type your questions and hopefully I will be, uh, <laughs> I can see your questions and I will read them. And also the same for the group in the Hangout, you post your questions uh, in the chat as regular. And hopefully this will be an awesome webinar. So, um, yeah. well, Jim, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm, I'm, it's good to I'm be well. Here today. It's good to be here today. And in my room is Angie, Barbara, and Raymond. And we're all doing well. Uh, I have a couple announcements to make, first of all. First of all, Galactic Reiki is next Saturday and Sunday. For those of you that still want to sign up, I I got some messages that they were having problems signing up. So if you do have any problems signing up, let me know and I will get you in touch with either Alexis or Max and they will get you uh, uh, processed. <clears throat> right now we have seven or eight people signed up, I think, but uh, there are some more still looking to do so. And they're having a little trouble. So hopefully we'll get that straightened out real soon. Also, we have the book is out now. And, and you can order it on um, Amazon or Kindle. And it's called From the Galaxy with Love. And if you, uh, if you go to Amazon or Kindle, that's all you have to do is put the title in. And it'll come right up. So... Uh, we're excited about that, and um, this will be the first time my name has ever been on a book, so that's sort of exciting. So uh, I'm hoping that a lot of you will take time to read it. I haven't read it yet. I have. I know that I channeled some of it, but I don't know what is actually in the book. So uh, I'm really anxious to find out. <laughs> but anyway... Any other announcements, uh, Johannes? Uh, I I'm not informed enough to have any announcements. This was uh, I'm just trying to get this uh, hangouts uh, just running. So I personally don't have any announcement prepared. So I think you covered it all. It seems okay, like okay. Very good. Is uh, we are also asking for anyone that you want to bring in, perhaps today. We already have Queen of Sheba. Council of Twelve. Uh, Sheer, what was the name of the uh, person you asked for? Uh, Joshua Benun and uh, Aaron. And there was somebody else, I think, but I can't remember. I can't remember. Katumi? Katumi, there it is. I knew there was somebody else. Anybody else want to ask for anyone? Yeah, Jesus. Jesus? And all right, well, that should be enough for today, anyway. Unless somebody else has somebody else. And welcome, Liney. Oh, and Liney's Pam. here. Hello. And Pam. And Pam. Yeah. Maybe uh, if anybody has a starting blessing, we can always uh, invite blessings to this wonderful okay. creation. I am. So I am going to do a blessing today. Anybody else want to do a blessing? Oh, I'll do one. Barbara wants to do one. Anybody else? If nobody right. wants, I, I'm always up for it. I'm always up for blessing. So okay, well, Jake. very good. I, 
Uh, Barbara, you want to start? And then JD, you can go. Let us connect today in a spirit of oneness and bring forth a great thought of the spirit today to bring us together in a way that we have not been before, in a warmer and more communal sense. Wasn't interesting. Go ahead, JD. Runata ki mana su shutukutu yamakati. Nariantaro kusukutusha maki, siantaki amarianto, karania kasutubai, kisanatayakasi mayako, shikaruana kisato, napaia kasunuyumanani, kusanatia kuskumara, kasikatayana kasisha, koyana manayakina. Fill your meditations with light love and gentleness make sure that it is there so that you may pass through all the information that is meant to be collected for that day beware that distractions will pull you out of what you are trying to accomplish so remember to get as far away from the noise as possible so that you may build up yourself in the sense of information and joy. Thank you, Lord, for this day and for all these people. We want to ask you to be with us today so that we may enjoy your spirit, enjoy a sense of community, and enjoy the messages that you have for us. Please show us the truth about life and our missions and all the things that we need to accomplish as a group and as individuals. And Lord, just be here with us today. It's most important that you are with us and that you keep things on the right path. Thank you. Amen. Um, all right, I'm going to uh, do a meditation now and see who comes in. And um, if you have questions, remember to uh, let uh, JD know, and um, he will get to you in a timely and orderly fashion. All right, have a great day today. Greetings, I am Elijah. I wanted to come today to say that our missions are tied together on this planet because our spirits in God are also tied together. We ask that you be with us in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, and in your total thought process about what is important in your life and how to move forward. We ask now that those of you that have any question about what your mission is to be, that you get in touch through meditation or prayer to find out what 
it is that you need to do to move forward. Also, many of you struggle with unconditional love. I know I've spoken of it before, but I see it happen all the time. People will be saying, I have unconditional love, but yet they exclude someone or talk about them or make it seem like they are not welcome. That is not unconditional love. Unconditional love is when you can actually look at someone, no matter what they have done, no matter who they are, no matter what station in life that they are in, and accept them for who they are and love them because they are a child of God. As Jesus did in his time, he went and sat with the sinners and those that were not uh, godly. Why did he do that? He wanted to find out where their minds were at. He wanted to find out what made them what they were, how they felt, and how they were going to react to what he had to say. So many times, as you will think about Jesus' life, you will find that he was sitting and learning what humanity was all about. He was learning what needed to be done to help others to grow and to shine and to rise up. He was there, not to, for himself, but for everyone else, of course. And let us say that we are here for ourselves and everybody else as well. We are all connected. We are all sharing a mission together. We are not alone in this. We are helping one another with the example of light and love and purity and wisdom as we move forward. So as you are moving forward, you are helping others to move forward because as you are standing up and being courageous and showing your light, you are making also a pathway for others to stand up and shine their light. It makes it easier when they're in a when you're in a group, when you're in a uh, not by yourself, uh, trying to do a mission in this world, especially in this time when things are so dark at some places and so light at others. You must stand together and shine the light together. But if that is not possible, if you must shine alone, if you must stand up and be courageous by yourself, then know that we are here supporting you from a distance. Know that we are here and are going to help you in whatever way we can. If you need healing, we are here for you. If you need supplies, ask. If you need anything, we are here to give you help in whatever way necessary. I can honestly say that there are people around that have been giving of themselves thanklessly at times to help others, to bring forth the light, to shine a greater example to the world, to show that it's not all about me, but it's about God and his will and his light and his message in the world today. There are so many that need wakened up. There are so many that are blind to, to the light because all they can see is money and, and greed and third dimensional things. Of course, these are important to be able to acknowledge them and deal with them properly. But if that's all you can see, then you need to be woken up. You need your eyes to be opened because there is so much more beyond the third dimension that needs to be identified, to be respected, and to be thought of and brought into this world. There is so much spirit 
that needs to be given to those around you and need to be accepted in this world today. I know that many of you find it difficult sometimes to speak about who you really are and be yourself in this world because they are not relating to you as that person. They are not relating to you in the metaphysical ways. They may not believe in aliens. They may not believe in spirit. They may not believe in the missions that are here and all around us. So it is difficult to be yourself in some places because they will shut you out in some ways. But listen to me carefully. Shining your light does not mean that you have to stand up in the middle of the room and announce that you believe in this, that, or the other thing. But shining your light is being an example of the positive, the good, the wise, and the correctness that is in your heart and that you have learned from God, that you have seen that must be emulated by the rest of the world at some point for the world to move forward. It does not mean you have to shout what you believe. It does not mean that you have to stand on a chair or even do anything exemplary outside of your normal life except for be exactly who you are and not be afraid of that. Not be afraid of who you are and not be afraid to actually talk about it if they ask. Now, you don't have to talk about it. They may not want to talk about it. But remember, kindness, goodness, your spiritual energy will shine through in truth as you are yourself in this world. Your kindness is one of the greatest examples that can that you can give to the world. Many people are rude, abrupt, curt, nasty. But if you show your kindness, your love, and your willingness to help, your smile, your heart will be opened their heart may also be touched. Do you know how many people are changed by a friendly voice each day? There are some times when you get up that you do not feel like being happy, that you don't feel like being the, the kind of example that you are meant to be. But before you get out of that bed, ask God to help you make it a great day make it worthwhile and make it make you an example for him for that is truly the best thing you can do that is truly the greatest direction you can put yourself into at the beginning of the day now there will be those that you come along that will try to make you unhappy or try to put you down and it may be successful because of whatever it is that they are telling you or bringing to you. But remember this, if you are positive, if you have joy in your heart and know God, you can get through these negativities much faster. You can know that the end is able to be seen. Those that cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel are the ones that get lost and, and lose their way but keep your eye on the light and make sure that you can always see it at some point and you will make it through the darkness always. Now, I know I've jumped all over the place and I've said a lot of different things, but if there are any questions that I may answer, please ask. Uh, if Steve had a question, then you can unmute and you can ask your question. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Greetings, Elijah. 
Greetings. It's a pleasure to hear your voice. I was a Christian for many years, so that's that's awesome that I get to reconnect you with you in this fashion. No, I love that. <laughs> so, I my question is regarding to the, the great energies, what was termed the event, which is just energies in the air, really. Um, I've been waking up every, every single day this week before I have to, feeling like somebody plugged me into an oversized phone charger. And besides grounding, I wanted to know, my question is, what am I supposed to specifically be doing with these energies? Sharing them, actually. You see, the smile on your face will share that energy. The Your attitude, the way that you act and uh, manage yourself, your attitudes will show that energy to everyone else. It's not that you have to say anything to anyone they will know that you are there because that is what is coming out of you you see many people receive the energies of the world but when you come into this kind of energy you're putting it out to the world does that make sense to you you are actually sharing that energy with the world as you step outside your door a smile can sometimes change the day of someone that's not having a good one so far, but a kind word, a hello, a good morning, can be just what they needed to change their attitude a little bit. But I feel your energy. I know that your energy is positive. And when anybody is around you, they will feel it and they will know it. You find yourself People wanting to be around you because your energy is good and other energies are not so good. Whenever you have a positive energy, you'll find that people will be nearby. That they'll be wanting to stand in your energy. Wanting to talk to you. Wanting to share with you. And I'm sure that you've experienced that. Yes, thank you. I work in a hospital, so that resonates a lot. But thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. And I wanted to say something about Christianity and Mohammedism and all the different religions. You know, some people would say you have to be a Christian or a Mohammed or an Islam or a Buddhist. God, any way that you can find God or any way that anyone can find a glimpse of God through any of these religions is beautiful. Now, if you find God through religion in the, in, the, in the sense that they are organized, that's fine. Just do not get caught up in the man-made problems of the religion. Do not find yourself being told what to do and not to do because your heart knows already the will of God and what is right and wrong. You were all born with right and wrong in many senses, but things were brought out to you and taught to you how to be right and wrong. But if you actually go and do introspection into your, your life, into your who you really are, you, you will resonate with the truth of God because he is part of your soul. Oh, and there are those that do need guidance, that, that are lost, and that is fine. If someone can help them find their way, that is a beautiful thing. And I have nothing against any organized religion, except that I do not like it, that sometimes it stops their potential instead of feeds it. They say, no, you can't do that. No, you aren't this. No, you won't. You will, cannot be part of that. But your heart may be somewhere else. These religions and these organizations must start to build bridges to everyone in the world, not just the ones that agree with them. They must build bridges to the brokenhearted, to those that have been divorced, to those that have had abortions, to those that are gay or straight or bisexual, those that have different points of view than the church. They have to start opening their arms and building bridges of inclusion to God's love. Because if you exclude people because you, you do not believe that they are right, 
Is that showing your love for them? Is that showing that you are going to help them become a better person? Or is that saying, stay away? Is that saying, I really don't love you except from a distance? You cannot really know someone and their heart from a distance. But of course, there are those that once you get close to them, you may not wish that you had. But guess what? Prayer, love, understanding, and wisdom will show you how to treat that person and show you how to move forward in your life. For some people, that is a bother. For some people, that's too much work. But guess what? That's what God wants. God wants you to know each other. He wants you to understand one another. He wants you to love one another. He wants you to appreciate what talents you have one to another. That's not easy. And some communities have a very hard time. They find people fighting and arguing and talking about each other. And wh why is that? Because you cannot accept them because they are not like you. Oh. Oh, no. They are not like you, and so you cannot accept them. Open your heart. Guess what? They might not like who you are either at points. You may have problems. You may have some things about your personality that other people don't like too. But is that worth fighting about? Is that worth losing friendships and connections and loved ones and relatives over? You must learn to accept each other's faults because you all have them. You must learn to accept each other for who you are, and perhaps your example will help build a road or a bridge to a greater relationship. That's not easy. Building roads to relationships is hard. There are some people that are easy to love, but there are others that are not. And so that's when the church says, oh no, we must cut them off from the church because they don't believe the same way we do. They have sins we cannot accept. But we love the individual as long as they're out there. That's not the way God wants it to be. He wants you to embrace the leper. Why? Because no one will. You are protected by God. When you embrace the leper out of faith, do you think that he will make you sick? No. He will show the leper your love, your inclusion. Francis of Assisi is a great example. He would go and embrace the lepers, never was sick. Because he had the faith that God was protecting him, God was with him, and that he was the example to be shown to these people that God was their protection also, and God was their healer. It is difficult to be courageous. But guess what? It is time for courageous people. It is time to stand up and not be one of those people that judges everybody else. That excludes people that you don't like. That excludes people that are not like you. It's time to embrace the world. It's in a bad shape. But guess what? Everybody wants to just protect their family. They just want to extend themselves only to the unit and the people they care about right here. 
If that is the way that it's going to be, then the world will never be saved. You must reach out into the world. You must care about the uncareable, the ones that are not lovely, the ones that are not kind and not good. You must be an example to them and kind to them that are not kind to you. Oh, I know it's fashionable and it is the thing to do if someone hurts you to get revenge. If someone does something to you, you get back at them. But guess what? That's not what God taught. That's not what God does. God loves every one of his children, and guess what? He gives them all a second chance, a third chance. And there is a verse in the Bible that says, if they should offend you 49 times, 49 times, then you should continue to forgive them. Now you say, well, there's a, some, a, some point where you have to stop and, and back off. Well, yes. There is a place where you should, if they are truly not going to change, if they are truly trying to hurt and not trying to can uh, be a good friend there are those that will hurt you over and over again but they just can't get it through their brain how to be a, that good person and those are the ones you should forgive over and over again but there are those that are just not ever going to be good but tell them this i love you but if you cannot be the way that you need to be around me then of course just a moment there is an interruption all right we can go back what was i saying something about someone can't change then you can remove yourself. I love you, but. Yes. I love you, but if you cannot change and if you cannot treat me with respect as the respect that I have given you, then I have to ask you why, and I will have to ask you to leave. I've You've given them a great chance. You've given them all the opportunities they need and all the examples that they need to change. And perhaps they will someday, but this is not the time for them. Is there any questions? I'm satisfied. Maybe. Oh, sorry, Steve. If you have anything else? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, more than good. Thank you for that. That was excellent. Perfect. Thank you very much. I'm sorry um, for the interruption <clears throat> there, but the... There was something going on. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, we have some questions off the YouTube. Maybe you've covered those uh, questions, but I will ask them anyway. So, Very well. Uh, it starts with, thank you, Elijah. Uh, when alone in front of a group of asleep individuals, how can we best prepare for that meeting to influence the outcome? I would like... Uh, some practical tips to calm the anxiety this may cause. First of all, you must prepare yourself ahead of time before you you stand in front of groups or before you go into groups that you know are sort of hostile or unbelievers or whatever you want to call them. First of all, you prepare your heart. You prepare your yourself that you will not be the judge that you will not be the one putting out the negative vibe, but you will be the one that is there in a positive way. That can be frightening. And that's where courage comes in. But you don't have to go into the group and say anything in particular. You may just be going in as part of the group, as a meeting, a part of the meeting and part of what is going to be 
uh, done in the business or whatever, and you just be positive, kind, and approach everyone with a good attitude. Now, if that is something that is not available in the room, that there's a lot of people that do not have good attitudes, before you even go into the, the room, feel the feel the energy that is that you were about to come into. And if it's not good energy, say a wonderful prayer that God will help you to change the energy in that room, to help to connect with the positive people in that room, to help to connect with all things that will bring about a positive change. I know it is difficult in this day and age to go into some of these places with, with that attitude and have it stay because there are so many that would throw negativity at you. But remember this, if you prepare ahead of time, if you expect that that is what is going to happen, then your, your heart will be protected. Your attitude will be protected. Your soul is protected. And you will walk out of that room as positive as you came in. Does that make sense to you? That is a beautiful message you bring to us, Elijah. Thank you very much. Um, if I can go with another question, there's off the YouTube channel again. Yes. Uh, how do you know it's really a sign from God, spirit guides, aliens, and angels, etc.? Uh, especially if everything is going to be all right. What does it mean? to have so many synchronicities. Thank you. God sometimes works in your life in very mysterious ways. He sometimes brings many synchronicities to you to assure you and affirm you because other people will not do that. There are no, there's no one around you to say, yes, that's right. Yes, that's what's going to happen. But God will build a situation so that you will be affirmed and know the truth about the situation. Now, how do you know if some of these things are true? You will know by how it resonates in your heart. When you pray about that situation, when you bring yourself to it, what does it say to you? Does it say beautiful, loving, kind, wonderful, or does it bring question marks to your brain? Now, I know that sometimes even question marks can be positive in some way, but be cautious if that's what comes to your mind. But if you feel a great clarity, a great calmness, a great peace about what has happened, or what the message has brought you, then you can be assured that this is a confirmation from God that this was a message. Even if everything else goes wrong that day, you will know that whatever that message particularly was, was a positive message for you, and you should take it and use it in whatever way you can. Thank you very much. I have one more question. Um, it's from Michelle, and I will just read off her question. I really need a word about reconnecting to my soul's purpose. There has been a block, and I'm finding it hard to reconnect, like almost impossible. I understand that. And the reason is, is there's so much energy coming at you. There are so many things coming at you. It's hard for you to find a quiet space to reconnect. There's no time for you to, to find that soul connection. There's no time to, to react to, 
to um, the positivity that you need to connect to because you're reacting to all the negativity and all the karma around you. This is what needs to happen, and I think that you already feel this, is that you need to separate yourself from that. And there is some times when you cannot do that. There is some times when the, the, there is no way to separate yourself from the negativity. But take heed. Ask God to bring you that time. Ask God to give you a place. Ask God to bring it to you that you can find that solace that you need for reconnecting. Or is there someone in your life that when you connect to them, brings you back to a safe place, brings you back to the heart of God, brings you back to the beauty, the peace and the understanding that you need to have. You need to find this. And the only way to find it is through prayer. And I know that sometimes the day is hard and confusing and you're battered by all the things that are happening. But stop and pray that God will find you and bring you to that time. God will answer your prayers. If you ask for the right things, he will give it to you. And he will bring you into that inner peace that you need. You see, with that inner peace, with that inner calmness, with that inner spirit, you can face all the negativity. Like I said, many of those things are coming in at you. But when you have the inner peace, the inner calm, the inner love, that's what's going out. And you need to find that which is the fire that burns, that has the outward movement, the outward movement from the soul, from the creator, from the heart. Now, if you need someone to speak to, I will speak to you. Just call me. And that is all I have to say about that. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anybody else in the room that wants to ask a question that didn't sign up? Mm -hmm. Then uh, you can unmute and ask your question. If there's no more questions, I will just add one thing before I go. I know that this world is troubled, and I know and I see all the things that are happening. And people will call things false flags, and they will say, did it really happen? Is there really something happening that I need to know about, or is this propaganda? Is this what I need to be focusing on? Should I know about that? Let me tell you this. You may pay attention to all the false flags, all the incidences of the world, all things that you may or may not think are true. But the greatest thing is to focus on the positivity because these things will lie to you, bring you deception, and make you doubt. But God and all positivity will bring you through your mission, bring you through your positivity. And it does not matter if these things are right or wrong or whatever. As long as you are positive and moving straight forward, you will know the truth when the truth is necessarily to be known. Does that make sense to you? Because you will be protected by the truth. 
you will be protected by God. And if he needs to go to put you through something to build your character, so be it. If he needs to put you to, through something to, to open your eyes about the truth about certain things, so be it. But you are protected in your mission. So do not let these false flags and negativities and rumors of war and all these people that are so awful as you think affect you. But stay in line with what you know to be the truth. Stay in line with God's words in your heart. The truth is simple. God loves you. God directs you and is part of who you are. It's very simple. But yet saying that it's simple does not make it simple to do or simple to live. But to understand it is simple. With that, I will take my leave. Be well, be strong, be courageous, and shine your light. For that is what you are here to do. That is what you are here to do. Much love. Hmm. Time for a change. Mm. Yes, you said it. Who are we speaking with? Yes, I am what you call the Queen of Shiva. Welcome. I have come out of Africa to meet with Solomon. It was a very interesting meeting. I came to show him that I was worthy of his trust and of his good nature, for it was said that he is very wise and he is very kind and he is very thoughtful, but he's also very fair and he will know you by the things that you do and say. He will be a good judge, so to speak, of your actions. So I went to see him. I needed some things. So I don't know all what history recorded, but I do know that it was a good meeting. Is there questions for me? None? Interesting. Yes, I have a question. Yes. Um, I was wondering, um, King Solomon was believed to um, be a great magician. Um, were you a magician also? I had heard about his being a great magician. In our land, there were great magicians, but I was not one of them. That was left for the lower realms to teach each other the magic of the age. And they would perform it for me, but I would not have to learn it. I would just be the, um, I would be the obtainer of the great magic gifts. And what did that require to be the container? 
The obtainer, not container. Oh, obtainer. Oh, <laughs> because the the feminine is usually the container, symbolically. Yes, I was the obtainer since I was in a royal position. Then I could obtain what I needed from my magicians, from my priests, and from those around me that were considered slaves and what have you. You're, um, have, have they um, found your palace yet or the city, the main city that you're... Um, I believe they from? have. They have not made it a great... They have not really un understood what they found yet. What, what is there to expect? Something like the Sphinx in Egypt? There will be some um, things of that nature, but they have not uncovered enough quite yet. Um, were you in connection or um, in communion or anything with uh, ETs or extraterrestrials? Now that I look back from this direction, yes, there were some. Egypt was full of strangers <laughs> and those that were not part of our culture, but we didn't find it unusual because we thought that you, they were just from other lands and other places. We thought perhaps that uh, other parts of the world had different kinds of people and different kinds of beings. We do, we're not aware that they were from off planet necessarily. They did fly around in their vehicles, but that could also be things from another land. At least that's what we were taught. They did not want us to know, I think, that they were from other worlds. They did not want us to believe um, anything other than what they told us. They tried to act like, uh, some of them tried to be godlike, but others tried to fit in but they did not fit in so well. Were they all humanoid looking or not? Oh no. The green ones were not humanoid looking <laughs> and the blue ones were not humanoid looking either, but they were rare. We didn't see too many of the greens or, or the blues, but they had their own names for each other. I called them to myself occasionally because they had certain things and information that was greater than what the peoples had. And so I would use them for my own use and find out more information. Now they were more popular in the North than they were in Abu Simbel area. I traveled around quite a bit. There were more of them in the Cairo area and in the um, pyramids areas. Was it safe then in your um, country or your empire to um, travel around or did you have to take a large army to protect you? I had my people to protect me. It, there was a lot of pirates, if you want to call them, in the desert, nomadic tribes that would take whatever they could. But you see, if you traveled along the Nile properly, you could get where you needed to go safely enough, especially with guards. So um, in your palace, did you have um, plumbing like um, the Romans showed in some of their, uh, in their not works? They show, no, not at all. We did not have that kind of thing. But some of the greens and the blues uh, seem to understand or have that kind of thing at their disposal occasionally. It appeared and disappeared. Okay. So how did you keep things clean or um, how, how did it That's work? That's what we have servants for. <laughs> I see. The servants would bring 
uh, different things for us to use. We had we had our, our containers that we would use. So how did you travel? Did you travel by horse, by camel, by? Camel was mostly, yes. And did you take, um, there's a story that Solomon had used his magic to bring your, hit your throne to his uh, palace. Did that happen? Yes. yes, it did. Either that or he had created one rather quickly, but it did look like mine. I was rather surprised. <laughs> Thank you very much for, uh, oh, one more question. Um, how were women treat, treated? I mean, um, with you being a queen, did it change anything, the dynamics between male and female? Not really. In my time, a queen was someone above the normal rank of the people. And so the people carried on their um, the way they lived just fine. I did not interfere with the way they lived their lives. I could see that it was working for them, if you will. And so if it worked for them, then I would let it go. There were a couple times when I did step in, but it was only because I thought it was really unfair. With the um, judicial? Um, ends or with the um, the little clans or the groups or I mean yes um, judicially I would say so were there um, were your um, bro were <laughs> was your government broken into tribes or groups or um, villages no, different leaderships yes there were leader it was not tribes as much as we had our cities that we ruled over. There were the pharaohs and the kings, and they ruled over their areas of the world, and they gave credence to those such as myself to rule over areas of land and areas that they could not control because they were too far away. So as that went, I did have to report to them occasionally and let them know how things were going, but they were still in charge of it, but yet I was more in charge of my area. I was just reporting to them what I had done or what things have had come to pass in a certain period of time. Was there was invaders and uh -huh. we did have to fight and hold our own at times, but that was, not very difficult because we were more organized than the barbarians that came in. What did you use as monetary things? Did you bargain with this, that, or did you have a set coin? We had artifacts that were traded and we had a form of money, I guess you could call it. Certain beetles and different, uh, Creatures from the desert were actually used for um, barter. Cats were considered very, very valuable and very lucky and were traded and used for a uh, trade for food and for different uh, luxuries as silks and different linens and, well, we just called them cloth back then. But, and rugs and things of this nature. Um, there were certain things that were very highly regarded for bartering. What did, um, what happened to your empire? Did it um, go away after you died or, or after you stepped down? I, I passed away and I did not know what happened to it, but I didn't care after I left. So <laughs> it, it was that it, it uh, there was another leader. It was 
a male after I left, and it did not work out as well, I guess, but I, I do not really know. Well, those are my questions. Thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. Is there anything else that anyone wants to know? Yes, Did this you... is Stephanie. I have some questions, if you don't mind. I, I cannot hardly hear you. Could you speak up? Yes, I said this is Stephanie. I have a couple of questions, if you wouldn't mind. Very well. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So lovely to speak with you. Yes, thank you. I wanted to know what was the average lifespan um, uh, during your time and what age you were when you transitioned? I was, um, I believe, as far as the sun is considered, the days, I was in my late 30s. That's, that's very, very young. Um, At that it, time, it uh, late thirties was still actually middle age. <laughs> Many lived oh. to late forties. So, were you alive when your son Melchiz? I think it was Melchizedek. Was his name? Um, maybe not. But were you alive when he set out on his trek? I had heard the child? name. Yes, I know. I knew who it was. There were rumors of him and his great wisdom and power. Yes. You had a, a son uh, that was born of Solomon, as, as I understand. Is that true? Yes, that is true. And also I was with Solomon for a great uh, 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 several years. Oh, wonderful. I understand he set out... Uh, in his life to go meet his father, Solomon. Were you alive when he set out on that journey? Yes. Were you still alive when he returned? I don't know how long that might have been, but. I have been called back to my kingdom or my queendom, but my I had to maintain my rule. So I left and when he left, I did not stay. There was no reason for me and the child to stay there any longer if he was no longer there. Oh, oh, oh so he, he was with you when he met him. I, I thought that you had him on the journey back to um, your land. There was and part of the journey we shared, but it was not the whole journey, no. Oh, okay. I understand at some point he went back and Solomon gave him a book. I, I think the Keberman, the guy. Yes. And yes, they were. I believe that him. is correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but last... I did not travel with them um, completely. I went okay. back to my own place. They were not going to with me all the way to my oh, oh, okay my uh place i understand um one last thing there was said to be a ring that solomon had that um possessed great power for him to be able to do things did you see that ring when you were there oh yes Could he you was describe that? it was a okay. large ring actually and it had many stones in it that were that sometimes would change color, and sometimes um, would be um, they would be like diamonds at some point, and then other times it would look like emeralds and rubies and sapphires. It was a very large multi-gemmed ring, and it was made out of gold, and the stones in it changed colors. Was that, um, it doesn't sound like it was something that was man-made. Was it otherworldly, given as a gift? Or it something? was otherworldly. Uh, it did seem to me to be that way, yes. And 
as it changed colors, it would have different meanings to him. It brought him information. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Those were my questions. I appreciate you. Very colors, it would have different meanings to him. It brought him information. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. That was a long delay. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you. And uh, thank you again for being with us. You are welcome. Is there I any have more question. questions? Yes, oh, I have well. a question, please. Uh, Queen Sheba. This is yeah. Marlene. Um, my question is, are there writings of yours uh, to be found in the, in the Dead Sea Scrolls? And or are writings influenced by you in the Dead Sea, Dead sea Scrolls? They are, I do not believe they are in the Dead Sea Scrolls, but I do have some writings that were among those they are not considered the same scrolls. They are a different set of scrolls. But uh, yes, m there are some writings that I have done, and they have not yet been published. They were found, but they were not able to be uh, understood properly, so they were not published. Uh, um, is it possible for you to expand on the uh, the meaning of your writings? Ah, the meaning of my writings was about the ruling of the land, but it was also about um, about God and how He led me to Solomon, how God worked through Solomon, and how my he worked through my child as well. And the, it, there was some writings about the ring as well. And about my throne. I remember the writing about the travels that we had. Mine were not as spiritually oriented as they were historically oriented. Thank you. Is your uh, presently is are your your endeavors in our universe? Yes. Thank you. Yes, I have endeavors in this universe, of course, and I am aware of what is happening on this place and in this realm. This is a special place and an interesting time. I will send my energies and have and am sending my energies to this place continually. Thank you for your enlightened words. You're welcome. Then uh, Dave, you can unmute if you have a question. Sure, thank you very much. Uh, hi, my name is David. Greetings, David. Hello, I just have a quick question for you. Um, it's my understanding that the pharaohs of Egypt had m metal rods, cylindrical rods, that were universal translators. Um, yes. Did you have access to one of these? I had seen them. They were not common. They were very rare. But yes, they did, they did use them to translate all languages. And even my language had a different colloquialism, as it is called, and he had to use it to understand some of the things that I was, say was saying as well, because we are from a different part of the land. And as being part of a different part of the land, there were different words that were not used in the north. Hmm. That's my only question, actually. Thank you very much. I would like to talk about those translator uh, rods. They were, I saw the only three of them in existence, but they were given to them by what we call the people from other lands. 
I believe the blue ones, the they call them now the blue avians, gave them these rods. Hmm. And they were only given to the pharaohs. Correct. Only to the greatest leaders for wisdom and understanding, for to be used for great understanding of the people and of the countries around and the lands that uh, should be ruled properly. So they gave them these translator sticks so they would understand the actual things that people were saying to them so they could rule properly and make fair judgments. Thank you. You are welcome. I have one question off YouTube. Uh, it's Kami that is questioning, do all personalities, incarnations of a soul continue to live indefinitely in the spirit world after the death of the physical body? Yes, let me explain that. You see, as you are incarnated or reincarnated onto a place, all the information is behind your chakras. You have your own Akashic records that you take with you wherever you go in the universe and incarnate. Now, there are different personalities in all the different people that this soul has been. And you may call on it as the different personalities if you wish. So that is something that is an amazing thing that the soul can do. It accumulates many different personalities. But you see, when there are there is a psychosis that is talked about that brings about the many different personalities. And that is when the third eye is open too far in one particular segment of time, and it brings in personalities from behind the, the chakras, and they can be recalled all at different times, of course, but sometimes more than one at once. Thank you for that. Uh, sure, uh, if uh, you can unmute and if you have a question. Greetings. Greetings. I have a question about the Ark of the Covenant. It was said that it was taken to your lands. Yes. It's not in our lands any longer, however. Do you know it where is it is? in Biafra, I believe. Where? Biafra. Biafra. Yes, that is the name of the country, at least the name that was told to me. It is guarded day and night and no one can see it or even get near it. He ha it has great energies. And if anyone gets near it, I believe it is radioactive. Did you ever see the contents of the Ark of the Covenant? What is inside? I had never seen it, no. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I have been aware of what it looks like. I have been aware of what is supposed to be the contents, mostly the tablets that the Ten Commandments were written on but there was other things in there as well but i understand that it is very powerful and has a energy of its own and must be kept away from the people amazing thank you very much uh i have another question here off the uh, youtube uh hello when will new age spirituality consciousness and aliens become a mainstream when the people of this planet are ready for it um 
you see there's too many people that do not care about aliens or anything outside of the third dimension they must start to become more aware of the truth about all things instead of just their things all things to be considered there are many energies and beings outside of this world and outside of your understanding but you must open your eyes to the fact that things will always change and that you are changing as well and that the third dimension will eventually change almost completely does that make sense to you Well, thank you for that answer. I hope it makes a lot of sense to the person who asked the question. And there's uh, one more um, question off YouTube. And he is asking, what are ghosts? Ghosts are those spirits that are that have left their bodies, but have not yet reached the oversoul. They are trapped between the Oversoul and the third dimension. There is a realm there that is the ghost realm. It is the realm also that your uh, spirit guides can reach you through. The spirit realm is, is well, the Oversoul is a spirit realm, of course. But this realm is the, the gateway to the higher realms. And it is where some are trapped because they cannot properly find the light or the, the, the portal to the, the uh, higher realms. And so some have found it but do not trust it. And so are trapped in between the realms because they do not trust that the the light that they see sends them to a greater place but they have been in a life that was probably not so good and believe that they are being tricked because they do not believe that they are worthy of going into that kind of light I hope I explained that properly. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I had one experience uh, where I was going actually through this uh, in my life where where I am now. I went to a place where I was uh, showing I was shown the light and it was up to me to go there and I could feel within myself I had a lack of trusting that uh, light. But eventually, uh, it became natural process to accept and trust uh, that light and that energy that yeah. I, I was. So I, I totally understand that. Yes, that is exactly correct. But they, it looks like they sent you back to this realm instead of having you go to the other. Yes, so uh, I have uh, Christine. If you have a question, you can unmute. Thank you. Hello, Queen Sheba. Um, I have some other questions <laughs> that came up. Um, there is advertised um, this new translator that one could put in one's ear, and it will translate whatever language is being spoken to the person, and it translates it. Is that similar to the rods that you were speaking of? Well, the rods were held in their hands and touched to their foreheads, but not placed in the ear. Okay. So these would be different. The, the rods that they had were held in their hands and the energy went to their brains. Okay, Do you, are you aware of, are you aware of the, um, ears the 
hearing aid or the aid that they put in their ear? Is this close to it? Close to You mean the translators? Yes. I do not know. This is some new technology you are speaking of. I only know about the translator rods. Okay. Um, also, do you know um, all the things that are in the Ark of Covenant? I was told, but I do not remember everything. But I do remember that there was the the tablets, the but there were other things in there as well. There was uh, possessions of Mo some of Moses' possessions were also in there. Like a staff? I believe his staff was in there as well. But there were possessions of Moses that were put in there after he had passed as well. What we know as the Ten Commandments um, today, is are those the same commandments or rules that um, Moses brought down? Yes. Remember this. The first yeah. set of tablets he he threw down and, and broke and yes. had to go and get a second set of tablets. This is the set that's in the Ark of the Covenant, the second set of tablets. Okay. Um, have you reincarnated on this planet since? Of course, several times. Were you always in um, the position of a queen, or did you sometimes no. come back? No, absolutely not. In every life, you would like a different kind of experience. Yes. So as a queen, I experienced one kind of life. But as a, a man, I experienced a very different kind of life, yes. And so I went back and forth from woman to man and had several different kinds of experiences in this third dimension. It helped me to become more well-rounded. But as I come back here, I feel the elegance of being the queen that I was, it brings back those memories, although it was a very harsh time to be alive. Yes. It, it, I was treated very well and with great respect. Have you ever reincarnated as um, uh, what we would call an alien or someone from a different planet or? Yes, I have. Even before I was Queen Sheba, I had been in other realms. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. If anybody else has a question, you can unmute and uh, state your question. <sighs> if not, we can always move forward. Yes. It was a very nice time speaking to you. I have not done this for a while. At least not in this way. It was a very nice situation and experience. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Blessed be. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Goodbye.
This is a bright realm. My eyes will not adjust to it. Forgive me. Who are we speaking to? We are from the 12 Council. It is on the edge of the universe as you know it, or do not know it. What role do you have as a council of 12? Many roles. There are many planets that seek our guidance, and many that are under our jurisdiction we must keep them safe from great harm the great negativities that exist but yet there are much positive things to talk about as well but we do have good wisdom and understanding so that we may give them good direction and find good thoughts for them and give them energies to move forward. It is hard to speak with this language. Have you ever interacted with Earth? Earth. That is this place. Yes. We are aware of it. This is our first interaction. Of least to my knowledge is there anyone else in the council that is speaking to earth yes there is another that is speaking to earth hey that gentleman's name is peter d i just looked it up but you're here in kind of communication with him yes one of the other council members is in contact with him What questions do you have other than the ones you have asked already? It is interesting to be here in such a bright realm. What realm and are you in? It's a darker realm, but it is a third dimensional realm. I don't know how we even got here. It's actually an interactive realm. Ah, I see. I see the astral has no limitations. Very well. We, we knew that. I just did not know how to state it. <coughs> you, uh, I can ask one question. Um... You said that it was hard to speak this language. Do you want to express yourself or can you express yourself in your own language? If you wish, I can speak my language. If that is what you wish. And here is a sample of it from my section of this galaxy at the end of the universe. Fush me walk. Finsworth, yeah. Huff, chef yet. Refoi. So shiva. That would be an example of it. Let Beautiful. me see if I can open my eyes. I must keep them fairly closed. The brightness of this world is too much. Is 
Is there any other questions? Why are we here? Yes. There will be one question from uh, Sher, if you can unmute. Greetings. Yes. You said that your uh, planet is in the edge of the universe. Yes. Can you elaborate on a couple of speculation that the people here on Earth have, like the, the notion that the universe keeps on expanding if you are on the edge of it? Can you comment on that? Do you feel the expansion? Does it ex expand? Uh, yeah. If it is expanding, yes, it does expand. It also contracts, but it is in huge time waves that are trillions of years in movement. And when it's expand, do you push back, um, you know, does the universe expand beyond your galaxy or your galaxy push forwards, like push backwards? It is moving with the galaxies. It will not ruin the galaxy. We move with it. It moves in a way that is exponentially and constant. I do not know if that's the right word, but it is a constant movement and then it will stop for a trillion years and move back it is that it is part of god's creation we do not go outside the universe we ex we move with it does that make sense to you yes do you also um look out for things outside of the universe like how does it looks like the are you able to see there is a huge space we do not have stars in it there is nothing to be seen outside the universe except we are told that there is another universe or many other ones but it is so distant, we cannot see it. Is there something that um, kind of blocks the universe from colliding except for the big space between them? Is there like a new energy to be learned about or discovered about? Can you fly there? Could your spaceship, you we know? We cannot go beyond the edge of the universe. The energies there cannot accept us i do not know what it is that keeps us out of that area but it is not to be traveled in it is unexplainable thank you very very much yes is the council one race or multiple races? We are more than one species. Thank you. We are of 12 species. Can you elaborate on the name of those 12 species? <laughs> Could Is it that you want me to name the 12 species? If you could in an English term that we would understand? This may take some time, but I can see that you are curious. The reptilian races, there are three. The Brandy, the Kalali and the Zazu. The humanoid races, there are four. 
Tuti Ta, Sinda Zundabora, Klata, and Frisians. Insectoid species, there is one Trishanzat. Tree species, there is one Frogenda Vesigen. I think I said that correct. Yes. A light crystal like species, there is one, the Krach. One moment, please. And the there is two aquatic species, Frida and Kra. I believe I have mentioned them all. Would you be able to elaborate a little bit on your role uh, as a council? Uh, not so much demographically in the universe where you work, but what field do you work with and help groups with? We do help with government, environment, energy usage, um interplanetary trade um, treaty alliances claiming of new land and anything else that is brought to our attention that needs clarification and uh, what dimensions do the 12 races range from? Third to fifth. That's all my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Marlene, if you want to unmute and ask a question. Um, at this time, I will cancel my questions. Thank you. Are you sure? Yes, thank you. I will cancel. Very then, well. Uh, then there's one question of um, of YouTube. Uh, sorry, there's a window in front of it. So, but I read the question before, so hopefully I will get it right. But how can we uh, bring uh, energy from the twelfth dimension to uh, to planet Earth. Oh, now it's there. How may we bring your 12th dimensional energy to planet Earth? She was asking. Well, you mean our 12 species energies. There are only three different dimensions. But yes, we can bring it to you this way if you wish what kind of energies are you looking for do you want a show of power is that what you mean or do you want to just bring our thought processes into a greater understanding or is it that you are questioning the existence of the 12 species. What is it that you want me to confirm? Uh, 
I will read the question so it's very clear what she stated as the question. How may we bring your 12th dimensional energy and information to Earth? It is here if you wish it to be. We are here speaking to you. I think I must not understand the question. The question is not worded properly, that's why it's been. I see. It's okay. Everything is here and everything is with us all the time. Nothing is outside of where we I are. Do, I do not mean to be disrespectful to the person who asked the question. I just did not understand it. I have a quick question. Uh, yes. Are we speaking to a, a group right now, a collective group, or are we speaking to an individual entity? I am an individual representing the group at this time, but they are listening as well. Okay. And which species uh, are you individually? Thank you. I have another question. Yes. There are many different councils. There are many different federations within this universe. Is there a distinction between the, the Council of Nine, the Council of Twelve, the intergalactic? I mean, how does that, do they all play with each other? How do they interact with each other? How is it within the universe many different there are some that communicate one with another, but there are some councils that do not speak to one another. It is that if you are not in our area, not within our bands of jurisdiction, then we should not want to talk to you except to learn about you or you to learn about us. But we do have intergalactic and interuniversal communications there is information everywhere to be found and so as communications are sent out from planetoids planet suns they are received by us and if we can receive your information then we will be aware of you and perhaps communicate if necessary. There are many thousands and thousands of councils and galaxies and alliances and federations and whatever you want to call them. It is because the galaxies and the universe are organized and wish to stay peaceful as much as possible and bring great wisdom if necessary or if possible to other areas of the universe. We go where we are needed, but mostly we stay to ourselves because we do not want to interfere unless you want us to. Uh, I am having a little struggle with answering the question because it is vast. Uh, there are many different answers to that question and many different ways for many different species to answer it. Can you relate to that? Yes. Can you, um, there's a question from Don. Uh, he is asking, what is your specific name, please, so that we can, uh, may ask for you to speak again. I am Pio Lanier.
Well, thank you. That's amazing. Uh, thank you, Pyro uh, Hello, Pyro Yes, Steve. Steve, yes. go ahead. I I see that you uh you specialize in in telling us how to integrate change into our daily activities. So I was wondering what the advice would be for the current times as to how to integrate that change into our daily uh, practice. First of all, you must be aware of the information before you can integrate it. And so therefore, find the ways to find the information. And then you can integrate it as needed and at will. Now, some of the integration will just be stored information. But others you might learn from and be able to act upon it in your own realm. But most of the information will be from beyond your world and not be really influential to you. So is, is the channel's new book helpful in that? I have not read it. Where is it? I, unfortunately, the channel hasn't read it yet, so you won't be able to get that info currently. <laughs> but um, that's that's what part of my information seeking uh, right now is that is that book. There, from what I understand from the minds around me, is that the information will be helpful to understand other species and what they have been through in their development and evolutions this will be helpful for your own evolution if you choose to use it as a guide i choose thank you very well perfect um marlene off off uh, off grid is uh, asking which constellation is are you located in and specific star system, please? You will not be able to see it from where you are. We are much too far for any of our stars to be seen by your people. But if you were to go beyond, let me see, from your direction, you would call it Cassiopeia. Go beyond that for a long, long ways. But none of our stars in our area of the universe can be seen here, at least not by your magnifications, not yet. when i have a question when we will find that will it come as a result of finding it within already before i do not think so but i do not know the history of your planet or how you are searching the universe but my thought is that at this time the answer would be no So we may find you before within ourselves, in our hearts. Yes. Rather than actually finding you physically. Yes, because all species are connected that way. The information of us will come far before you will reach us. But the information that we exist and who we are will be available to you far beyond, far before you will ever see us in person, I am sure. Eternal. It is time for us to go. Thank you for your time today. If you wish any more questions, please ask them quickly.
Thank you. We, we said, wish only your good survival and that you continue and may you grow into a species of great notoriety. Thank you and blessed be. Hello. Hello, Jim. Hey, hey, how are you? We're doing great, and you're doing great. So, thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, already, I'm back. It felt like I was a long way away. <laughs> a long way away. Okay, that was a long way. They were from far away. All right. Um, is there any closing blessings today? Anybody? I'll do one if nobody does. I love them. Closing blessings. Okay. Yes. Okay. Very good. Barbara will do a closing blessing. Anybody else? All right. Go ahead, Barbara. <laughs> We give thanks in the realization that even the universe will be small someday and that we'll be able to communicate with many different species and many different universes and be always one in the thought that we can create together, think together, and form together. Let us now just contemplate a time in the future when things will be as such. Okay. Bless it be, Jim. All right, have a great day, everybody. You too. You as well. Thanks, thank man. you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, JD, for uh, hosting. One more plug about the book. My pleasure. Oh, yes. My pleasure. One more plug about the book, wherever it is. Um, and about the um, Galactic Reiki. If anybody still wants Galactic Reiki uh, for the next coming Saturday and Sunday, please let me know and or let uh, Max or Alexis know. So there is a Reiki spot in the humancolony.org area. I think it's um, Galactic Reiki, or maybe it just yeah. says Reiki. Um, but that's where you sign up. So thank you so much. And have a great day, everybody. Love Jim, you much. Jim, I, I have one question. Yes. Um, I've taken the Reiki class twice with um, Takur and yourself. And um, do you give certificates? Yes. Yeah. My my computer was broken, and so oh. I have not yet been able to do it. So I'm in the process of getting a new computer, but I will do it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Chrissy. Yeah. She's in charge of those. So, And then all of a sudden her computer pooped out. So... <laughs> <laughs> could not get it finished so yes there are certificates coming okay. uh, Jane, Jane. Uh, yes i have one um, more class no, i'm ahead. sorry no go I ahead go ahead. More question um on the record class that you're given um even though i've taken the other three or um done the same are you ever going to go into the next phase because yes, um, this will be the last time the reason why we're doing it this time the same is because uh, people in New Zealand, Australia, and Japan wanted to become involved, and they uh -huh. couldn't with the time frame that we used before. So this is a different time frame so that they can be involved. Okay. Thanks, Jim. So, And then we'll go to the next phase after okay. that. Much love. All right. Much love. 
Uh, Jim, my question was, is your book going to be coming out in paperback as well? Well, it is in paperback. This is not a hard cover. It's sort of, it's, it's, uh, it is paperback right now. Amazon friends. I'd like it to be in hard cover, but it's, it's actually paperback. So. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, and, um, I would like it to come out in hard cover, but we need to find if a good publisher for that. So and then if anybody has any ideas, you let us know. He was also thinking about getting it on audio. Yes, we're we're also working on an audio book for this for this book. In fact, he already has the speaker the speaker for it. Yeah. So yes. So I'm very excited about that. So uh, hopefully everybody will enjoy it. I'd enjoy your feedback on it as well. Uh, make sure you're honest. So that's all I ask. So thank you very much. Have a great day. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Congratulations for the book. Oh, thank you. I thank you everybody that. for your questions. Thanks. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. I was like